Hello YouTube! I'm Trajan Rex and today I'm going to show you the very best way to start from nothing in Elite Dangerous. Now if you have friends and you're a new player and they all play, they're all going to have their way that you should start. And I'm sure that it's going to go very, very well. Playing this game with friends is amazing. But if you're starting from nothing and you don't know anyone who plays this game, this is the best way to start regardless of what game mode you want to play in or what your experience level is. And so in solidarity with that brand new player, I'm going to delete my save so that you can see how to start from zero just like you would be. And there we go. Now, if you are truly brand new to this game, I highly recommend that you do the initial tutorial. You're going to need to set up your controls and you're going to need to get everything running correctly. I've done that many times though, so I'm going to skip it, but you should definitely do it if you've never done it before. However, when that is over, you're going to find yourself in Matet, same as I am here. The first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is launch out of the station and make your way to Dromi. It is the nearest system to you and it's still inside of the starter systems and the great thing about the starter systems is as soon as you level up one of your professions, your license to come here is revoked and no one can come here. So if you're playing on open, say, there's very, very little chance that you're going to get ganked by somebody with an overpowered ship that's been playing the game for years. It's not going to happen while you're in the starter systems. So the goal here is to spend as much time in the starter systems as possible while not wasting any of that time and coming out of here with a fat stack of cash to get started in the real world of Elite Dangerous. The reason we are in Dromi, though, is because there are pirates here. And what's more fun in a space video game than blowing up some pirates? So we're going to find ourselves a high resource extraction site. I prefer the one that's further away. The closer one's in some sort of a gaseous ring. It's really tough to get your bearings in. I much prefer having a band of rocks I can look at. So we're going to head on over and smoke ourselves some pirates. First things first, we're going to turn on our night vision because even the best pilot in the world is definitely going to crash right into an asteroid if he can't see it. And now that we know what we're trying to avoid, let's find what we're looking for. And there it is. Gunfire, the telltale sign of a fight. So let's head on over and see what's going on. Make no mistake, this ship you're in is terrible. If you catch any fire, if anyone turns on you and decides that they're going to blow up this tiny little sidewinder, you're dead. So the trick to being able to kill these pirates and not get dead is to make sure that they are fighting and that they're fighting cops before we engage. You're not gonna have to play timid like this for very long. That's the whole point. But for now, we really need to make sure that we don't get shot. So let's take a look around. We've got a vulture, we've got a python, and we've got an FDL. And they look to be shooting at some poor bastard who's out here mining. No cops are involved yet. And so we're not gonna get involved. Just gonna sit and wait and watch. And this can be tough to do. I know it's a video game. You want to get in there. You want to shoot people. You want to mix it up. And we're going to be able to do that shortly if you want to. But for right now, we really just need to wait for that, for the cops to start shooting. And so now we're going to follow this vulture. They seem to have picked the vulture. And we're just going to hang out. We're going to watch the cops tear this guy up.
This is a pretty small ship, so we got to watch. As soon as his shields drop, his hull is going to go down real quick. And there we go. Oh, we got a couple shots on him. And we got credit. Sweet. So now we start looking for the next ship. Follow the cops around. See what it is they're going to attack next. And here, it looks like they've picked the FDL from that same group of ships we saw originally. And so just like the last time, we're going to hang out and watch these cops shoot this poor guy. Now, if you're not aware, the Fertilance is arguably the best combat ship in the game. It's definitely the best medium combat ship in the game. And so these NPC cops are going to take quite a while to knock this guy down. And so in the interest of time, we're probably going to move through this really quickly. But things to note. You really don't want to get the attention of a Fertilance when you are in a Sidewinder. He will kill you real. And now that he's down, make sure we got credit. We did. And ooh, the Python showed up. So now we're going to do the same. We're going to wait. And then we're going to get credit for his kill. And there we go. Once we see another fight, we're going to head that way. At any time, you can check your transactions tab and it will show you how much bounty money you've accumulated so far. And that's good to keep an eye on so you know how much you're making. Find ourselves a clipper and... Get credit for him. And we're just rinsing and repeating. Credit for this eagle. There we go. And this fertilizer. There we go. You'll notice I keep checking on the right-hand side what is, for me, the four-button menu. I'm looking at my combat rank. We need to make sure that we get all of the ship kills and all of the bounty money that we can without leveling up that combat rank beyond harmless. And so that's how long we're going to grind these ships. We need to make sure that we don't complete the harmless level of combat rank because the moment we rank up our system permit is going to get revoked and we're going to get kicked out of the newbie area which means we're not going to be able to do the entire last half of this video not that the things that we're doing in the last half of this video can't be done outside of the newbie area but this is a safe and lucrative place to do it because so few people are allowed to come here Get credit for that federal assault ship. And now we're at 94% into harmless and it's time to go. Because if we get another kill, we run the risk of leveling up. With $3.4 million in bounties, that affords us the ability 
to really get our hands on a pretty decent ship. I stayed out for the entire time to collect all $3.4 million worth of bounties. As a new player, every time you hit about a million bucks, it's probably smart to head back to the dock and turn those in. But I'm gonna turn them all in right now because I like getting huge payouts all at one shot. And there we go, almost 3.5 mil. And now we can get ourselves into a ship that is going to make us a ton of money. And that ship is the Cobra Mark III. This is without a doubt the best ship that you can buy in the starter systems and arguably the best multi-purpose small ship. It's great for combat. It's solid for trading. I mean, as good as you're gonna get out of a small ship but it's also the best ship for what we're going to use it for here, which is core mining. You can go ahead and exchange your Sidewinder. It doesn't matter. You get another one for free if for some reason you ever need it and you don't make any money for selling the one that you have. So you can get rid of it or keep it. It's totally up to you. It doesn't really matter. Now this ship has a much longer jump range than your stock Sidewinder did, even though you haven't put any money into this ship at all. And that's a big deal because it will let us briefly jump out of the starter systems so that we can pick up the parts that we need so that this ship can make us a ton of money. And the place that we need to go to do that is Nana Bozo. It's the closest system that has absolutely everything we need all in one station so we don't have to make a bunch of trips and we don't have to dance around trying to find what it is that we need. Come to Nanabozo, go to Lamarck Orbital, and we're going to gather everything we need right from there. Once we're here in Lamarck Orbital, we're going to go immediately to Outfitting. And we're gonna get ourselves set up to make some real money. This loadout is based on leaving the starter systems with at least two and a half million dollars in a Cobra. If you're a little bit short, there are places you can skimp, namely on the hard points. I would skip the burst laser and the multi-cannon, but you definitely need the seismic charge launcher and the abrasion blaster. For optional internals, we're going to need three 4E cargo racks, a 1A collector limpet controller, a 2D refinery, a 1A prospector limpet controller, and the other absolutely required component is the detailed surface scanner which means we're gonna have to give up either the Super Cruise Assist or your docking computer. It's up to you which one you feel more comfortable with doing without at this early stage in the game. Personally, I don't ever use an auto dock computer unless I'm using a really big unwieldy ship and Super Cruise Assist is awesome. I use it all the time because life is too short to be micromanaging your Super Cruise speed. For utility mounts, we absolutely need a pulse wave analyzer. You can skip the heat sink if you want. I like to keep it just because heat sinks are super useful and I had the extra money, so I threw it on. For core internals, you can skimp here in places if you need to. You absolutely need the 4D power plant and the 4A frame shift drive and the 3D power distributor. The rest, if you're short on money, you can leave them E-rated, but no matter how much money you have, I wouldn't worry about going above D-rated, mainly because you don't need it and you're trying to save money and every little bit helps moving forward. You're also not gonna stay in this ship for a super long time, so you don't need to spend a whole lot of extra money. Before you leave Lamarck Orbital, go to Advanced Maintenance 
and get yourself a full cargo hold of limpets. I forget them all the time. Everyone forgets them all the time, and you will be devastated if you cargo get out there and don't have them. Capacity. To preempt all of my veterans who I know are freaking out because there's only a 1A collector limpet controller on here and you're screaming, oh my God, it's gonna take forever with only one limpet. I agree. However, for a brand new player, first of all, cargo space is at a premium right now. So we need to make sure that we don't waste limpets on them crashing into rocks and dying. A new player is going to take a fair amount of time to negotiate themselves around cracked asteroids and hit everything with their abrasion blaster, that affords the lone limpet plenty of time to go pick everything up while they're figuring out how to navigate an asteroid. Also, they're for sure going to brush limpets against rocks and get them killed. A 1A collector limpet means you're only killing one limpet at a time and you can just spit out another one. Now we're going to head back to Matet, back into the starter system, and we're going to get to core mining and make ourselves a whole fistful of money. The reasons we are going to do this mining in the starter systems are twofold. One, if you happen to be playing in open, you're way less likely to get killed out here by somebody who just wants to be a jerk. Secondly, because so few people are allowed in the starter systems, and even fewer of them have the ability to core mine, these rings are not nearly as depleted as other core mining spots within the bubble that a newbie would have a chance to get to. Once we are on our way to the planet to scan it, it's a good time to set up our fire groups. We want our weapons to be on one fire group. We want our seismic charge launcher and abrasion blaster to be on a different fire group. We want our collector limpets on an entirely different fire group from those, as well as our detailed surface scanner to be on an additional fire group. We also need one more for our Prospector Limpet and Pulse Wave Analyzer. Now that we've reached the planet, it's time to use our detailed surface scanner. Push M to change to analysis mode, find your detailed surface scanner fire group, and activate it. Then mouse over where it says ring, and your probe will hit the ring. In a perfect world, this ring would be covered with orange dots that show the locations of all of the hotspots that it found. Unfortunately, the detailed surface scanner can be a little bit glitchy and sometimes it doesn't show them. That's okay. If you don't see them, they will still show up in your navigation tab when you open up your one menu. Now let's take a look at what hotspots we have. Looks like the only core mining hotspot we have is Road Plume Site. Road Plume Site? Road Plume Site. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But we're gonna go to inara.cz and check the price. You go to the Galaxy tab and then click on Commodities. It will show you the prices of everything that you can sell or buy in Elite Dangerous. This is an extremely useful website and I highly recommend using it. These prices will fluctuate a little bit live because it depends on when the last time they were logged into this site was. But it looks like right now Road Plume site is selling for a little over 800,000 a ton, as well a couple of other Materials are selling for some pretty high prices. If for some reason when you do this, Road Plume Site is not a good material, check the nearby system of Dromi. The rings in that system have a lot of other good core mining hotspots, definitely Muscovite and a few others. If for some reason you don't find anything in that system that's selling well, check the other systems. 
But for right now, for us, Road Plume Site sells quite well, so we're gonna go mine that. Now, unfortunately, the hotspot is on the other side of this planet. So one thing you'll learn quickly in Elite Dangerous is that while the shortest distance between two points is always a straight line, the fastest way to travel that distance is often not a straight line. Because of the way gravity works in this game and in the real human world, you will travel much faster if you can get out of the gravity well first. The fastest way to get to this is not to orbit the planet to it, but to supercruise directly away from the planet to get as far out of the gravity well as possible and then rotate back in. Try not to drop into this ring too quickly, or you will take a little bit of hull damage. I'm incompetent, so I crashed right into it at a very high speed. Don't do that. Yet again, dark rocks, dark background. One of the very first things we want to do is turn on our night vision. Once that's done, we can get to core mining. Now there's a reason that we decided to do this in the starter systems. When you crack a core asteroid, it destroys that core asteroid for every player in the game for six days. So trying to core mine in the bubble in systems that are highly trafficked is going to be very difficult except in the starter systems, because so few people are able to core mine in here, there's a much higher percentage of uncracked cores in these rings than you will find in other rings of their type inside the bubble. So when you fire your pulse wave analyzer, it's going to shoot out a pulse and some of these rocks are going to change colors. Easiest way to see which rocks change colors and which rocks you want to look at is to go into your free camera mode and look at the rocks from the outside of your ship. Now you need to make sure your ship's heading is above the asteroid field so that you don't dip into it and crash while you're in third person mode. It can be difficult to decide which rocks are core rocks and which rocks aren't. The yellow color isn't enough. You want them to be very bright. And then ideally they will go from bright to dark or dark to bright, which indicates that there is a core. Also, you want to look for the teardrop shape. If you're in a metal rich ring, that is another telltale sign of a core asteroid. You're not going to be able to be 100% sure right away that what you're looking at is a core asteroid, so you're gonna wanna prospect it. It's the only way to tell for certain that it is a core asteroid. The more you get this down, the fewer limpets you're gonna have to waste on prospecting though, and that's definitely good. But here we have our very first core, and it is indeed road plume site. Just because you're in a hot spot for this though, doesn't mean that all the cores you're gonna find are for road plume site. It could be for something else. As a general rule, if it's not an expensive element, you don't wanna waste cargo space on it. Once it's prospected, you will see that the asteroid is covered in fissures. You can either target them manually or use your contacts tab and you're going to fire seismic charges onto those fissures. The longer you hold the button down, the stronger the charge will be, and each fissure has its own strength associated with it as well. You're playing a little bit of a mini game here, and there's a finesse to it that is going to take some time to get used to. And truthfully, even once you are used to it, you're still gonna screw it up quite often. It can be touchy and getting impatient is a great way to wind up screwing up your asteroid. 
The other thing to be very careful about while you're negotiating this asteroid is that you don't crash into any other ones, which in my haste, I didn't do very well. And I wind up damaging my thrusters here, right there when I crash into a rock like an idiot. And my reticle winds up bouncing all around for the rest of this video because I crashed into an asteroid. Try not to do that. This build doesn't have shields because we maximized cargo space. So be careful. With this mini game, you're gonna wanna set charges of varying strengths on fissures of varying strengths until the blue light in the center lights up and you get a check mark. And there we go. Now get away from the asteroid because when it blows up, you can take damage, and you really don't want to kill yourself with your own mining charges, which I have done. Now you'll see that it blasted out 14 chunks. That's pretty good. We're going to dispense a collector limpet so that he can run around and scoop up all those nifty little fragments and then open our cargo scoops so that he can actually put them into our ship. And then we are going to look around and find the surface deposits of road plume site that have been opened up from the inside of the core. We use our abrasion blaster to knock those off of the rocks. To do this, you're going to have to negotiate your way in between these cracked fragments of asteroid. It is slow going, especially when you're new. Take your time. You're not in a hurry here. When you leave this spot and you have a full cargo hold full of this stuff, you are going to have a ton of money. Just take the time, do it right, learn how to do this safely because core mining is very lucrative and likely will stay very lucrative for a long time. Learning to do this confidently is going to pay dividends moving forward. Now, if all things go right and you don't burn too many prospector limpets trying to find your first core, you will wind up with a full cargo hold. And you will need to jettison some limpets to let the rest of the material your limpets are collecting actually come out of your refinery and into your cargo bay. Don't freak out if it takes you a minute. The stuff's not going anywhere. It will be fine. Once you have no valid collection targets, it's time to go and find yourself another rock. Same deal as before, get yourself slightly above the asteroid belt. Get yourself into third person and start doing some pulsing. Once you find another asteroid that you think is a core, take a look, see it's bright. And it didn't do the color change this time. But it is that teardrop shape, it's just at an angle so you're catching it edge on. And that core is Painite, and Painite doesn't pay very much, so we are going to skip it. That asteroid is bright, but it's the wrong shape, so we're gonna skip it. That guy, however, is interesting. Teardrop shape, good color. And there's our next core. Asteroid 
something. Now, you're probably gonna have to crack four or five asteroids total. I'll show you each one that I cracked, but we're gonna go through them pretty quickly, just in the interest of time. Now, despite being fairly practiced at this, I'm gonna screw this asteroid up on the next charge that I set. As you can see, it's in the red, and I have to disarm this charge, otherwise it's going to obliterate a lot of chunks. And I'm running out of time. I only have 20 seconds left to get a charge on a fissure. And I'm not gonna make it, so I make the choice to bail out. These explosions are gonna go off no matter what, so you still don't wanna be near them when it happens. But as long as there are some fissures left, there's a chance you can come back and crack this asteroid even after your first set of charges fail. Again, this isn't ideal, but this asteroid can still be saved even though I screwed it up. If you use up all of your fissures, however, it won't be able to be saved. But. I found an unused fissure and I'm gonna put a max charge on it. And it's in the red, which sucks, but that's all the fissures that I have left and I need to make sure that I get something out of this asteroid. So fly away and then you can select your charge in the contacts tab and select detonate now. And then this time, because I'm not running from my life, we get to turn around and see the best part of core mining. Boom. So satisfying. And then just like before, we're gonna open our cargo scoop and dispense a collector limpet and fly around and knock off the surface deposits with our abrasion blaster. Sometimes your collector limpets are going to run into rocks and die. If that happens, just spit out another collector limpet. It can be a little bit of a balancing act though. You don't wanna to use too many limpets on collection because if you run out, you can't prospect anymore and your mining day is done at that point. When your cargo hold is full though, it doesn't mean that your limpet cannot deposit what it's picking up. It deposits that into your refinery. As long as there's still space in your refinery, you're okay. But you may have to abandon a limpet or two to make sure that you have room. And I got a pretty good haul off of this asteroid, despite how badly I did blowing it up. And once you're out of collection targets, it's time to go. This entire process, start to finish, took me about an hour and a half. It'll probably take you a little bit longer. That's okay. Like I said earlier, we're not in a hurry. We're trying to make sure that we do this right. This rock, has that perfect teardrop shape yet again. And there we go, it's another core. So let's crack this mother load and get ourselves some more money. Again, blue check mark, perfect, right in the middle. And I did it quickly enough this time to actually detonate on purpose rather than running for my life, which is always a win. It's like detonate now in 10 seconds. and get ready for the show. Woo! A little close on that one. It's just so much fun watching these rocks explode. The sound, God, the sound. Okay, so here, 
my last collector limpet died and there were still a couple of pieces floating around and I didn't want to burn a limpet on collecting two pieces of road plume site. So when your cargo scoop is open, if you select the thing you're trying to pick up, you'll notice that there's a little blue box on the left hand side with a reticle on it. That's your cargo scoop. If you fly slowly, you can actually manually catch this thing right into your cargo scoop. This is how mining was done before there were limpets, which is also why mining wasn't done much before there were limpets because it was miserable. But there we go. We scooped the last couple pieces without having to waste another limpet, which is always a plus. And let's get out of here and go find ourselves something else to mine. Oh, that guy looks pretty good. And since we're running low on limpets, we want to really be careful. Ah, it changed colors a couple times. It looks like it's the right shape. Let's risk one of our last couple of limpets. And there it is. Sweet. We have two limpets left, which means we can run our collectors after we crack this baby open and hopefully fill our entire cargo hold with road plume site. And there we go. Blue check mark. Let's get our distance. And fire it up. is just so satisfying. You want to get so close to it. Don't do that. Now here, my last collector limpet died right before the very last fragment. So I just went and scooped it up by myself. Getting practiced at this will make this a lot easier. And Unallocated resources is exactly what we want for our very last fragment because we have a full cargo hold and a full refinery. We are absolutely maxed out. We cannot possibly hold any more road plume site. So we're gonna get out of this ring and go check Inara again to find out the best place to sell, which at this time was Zeta Horologii. I would guess how it's pronounced. They don't really tell you. Either way, it's not super far away. And with the 5A frame shift drive that we put in this Cobra, we're gonna be able to get there in a reasonable amount of time. When you're doing a long jump, you'll see there's a dotted line and a solid line. The solid line is the area that you can travel on your current amount of fuel. The dotted line means you're going to run out of fuel. So we're gonna make a pit stop on the way and pick up some more fuel so that we can get there safely. Don't run out of fuel. And once we're refueled, we can head on out and keep going. And there's our other concern. A large haul like this attracts pirates and they will try to interdict you. If you've never been interdicted before, that escape vector, you want to aim towards that as best you can. Turning your ship, using your pitch, using your yaw, Keep your center as close to that escape vector as possible. Whatever you do, do not slow down. And there, interdiction avoided, and we can be on our way. If for some reason you do lose an interdiction and wind up getting shot at by a pirate, that's what the heat sinks are for. You can pop a heat sink, 
they will lose their target and you can super cruise out of there as fast as possible. Now I'm going to May port in this particular system. What system you're going to to sell your huge haul will probably be different. Once you land, always make sure to refuel and repair. And then we're gonna hit the commodities market. Click on sell. Don't buy things. I have done that. It makes you very sad. And there we go. We can sell our road bloom site for 835 G's a pop. 40 mil. And then now that our cargo holds empty, our refinery dumps into the cargo hold, giving us an extra two and a half mil. And there we go. The $43 million newbie. You have way more money than you're supposed to now. Go do some research, grab a dope ship, blow some stuff up, go have fun. The sky isn't the limit. The sky's the whole game. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I will see you next time. Good luck, commanders.